Good afternoon, people. Uh, this is Dallas again, checking in for EdCamp 3.0, and I'm going to be initiating the session for bring your own device into classes and the best practices for that bring your own device. With me today, I also will have Tammy. I'm going to start with a brief introduction of myself, and then I'll have Tammy introduce herself, and we'll get to chatting the two of us. So my name is Dallas. I teach in New Westminster, British Columbia and live in Vancouver, um, but I teach at an alternate school, so it's grades 10 through grades 12, um, with a population that is predominantly on low income and many other struggles in life, so it's always an entertaining day and challenging day, but never dull. And Tammy, what can I tell, or you can tell us about yourself. I'm, I'm Tammy. I, I teach in Huntsville, Alabama at a K-8 school. I teach sixth grade American history and we we are going to try BYOD school-wide this year. That is um, exciting yet daunting all at the same time to me. <laughs> are you going to have any one person that's in charge of kind of rolling it out to the whole school or is it kind of a free-for-all? Well, two of the... One, one teacher and myself ha has gone through training so we'll probably um, head up any of the questions and organizations. It was uh, initially meant to be just the two of us yeah. uh, doing a pilot program, uh, but the principal feels like he wants the entire school to do it this year, so we'll that, see how it goes. <laughs> it's a scary process, and I wish you the best of luck taking care <laughs> of a whole school, knowing how many variety of devices there are out there. Um, so you said you were going to do a pilot program with yourself in another class uh, and grade six histories was it? Um, yes, I'm grade six okay. history and the, okay. uh, the other classroom is a seventh and eighth grade classroom. Okay, and have you used it in your classroom, done a BYOD before in your yes. classroom? Yes, a couple of years ago I did. And um, what do you use with the BYOD? How do you roll that out in your classroom? What does it look like? Well, because of the different, the variety of devices that are going to come in, you know, my focus is going to be to um, stay away from apps as much as possible and do more web-based things. Yeah. Okay. And do you have any ideas with web-based things or like any particular web-based programs that are available on all or do you just think you're going to roll it out there to uh, general internet use, or are you still in that testing and trial era? Well, uh, this past past year, the second semester, I do have I have access to um, 13 iPads on my grade level that we share among the sixth grade teachers, and so I use them this past <sighs> year and tried out things like today's meet as a back channel. Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, Socrative, the Socrative app, I think that you can get on multiple uh, types of devices. Yeah, we you Socrative. can. And um, we used uh, the Linoit, the digital bulletin board, a lot this year. Oh, so I haven't heard of that one. Those threes. Oh, the, it's very cool. <laughs> it's a, Socrative, or, um, I'm quite familiar with, and I use that with my class and students as well. Because with BYOD, you never know what kind of device you are getting in. Right. And Socrative is one of those ones that you can use with the PC, the Mac, the iPhone, the Android, the Blackberry. It kind of covers all bases. They don't all have full function, um, but it's pretty well there for everyone to be able to use and access. So I, I love that. I love on that app. I love the because I, I at one time a few years ago I had the uh, student response systems by e instruction and that that ba that format was so uh, it was so user friendly and then we went to the smart board student response systems yeah. and it was not so much user friendly. So I'm really enjoying the student response capabilities of that. <laughs> Well, and not to talk too much about it as well, because we are, but it falls into the BYOD. Um, the fact that you get instantaneous response with it, yes. it's, it's with the students, you get the live feed, you can automatically see and do a quick pull of who understands and who doesn't, or do you want to move on, do we need to repeat as an instructor, which kind of gives us a lot more information. Because I know for myself personally, I, what I'd use it, um, Socrative for with the BYOD is pulling my students 
I often get blank stares regardless if they understand or don't understand because they're a little bit shyer and don't want to um, seem like they're not as intelligent or that they don't have as many good ideas as their peers. So I always do a quick poll to kind of see, do I get it? Do you get it? Can I move on? Or, okay, how far back do I need to go? What do I need to repeat? <laughs> so I kind of like that idea with it that it's that instantaneous, I get to adapt and I change my lesson right on the spot and I don't have to do kind of like a, lots of teachers will do an exit slip sort of to see where they are in understanding, so I don't have to wait to the next day, I can deal with it right on the spot. Which is one of the things that I like. Yes. Um, so we've talked a lot about um, soccer, do you use um, BYOD for anything else in class or, or do you intend to this year? I've, I'm going, to, I'm I'm going to try some different things once we I see what types of devices we have out this uh, you won't we, we get back to class yeah okay um, is there any particular device that you're familiar with or that you've um, experienced with your students bringing in more so than any other uh, a couple of years ago we, you know um, The, the students that brought them that brought the devices in were more cell phone based, so they weren't the smartphones. So, yeah. you know, it was, uh, I I used a couple of years ago. I used Poll Everywhere a lot in my class. Yeah. So that's that's where you know we got some of the um, experience. Yeah. Nice. I know um, for myself with this uh, BYOD, I often use it actually, and my students I have them use it with Twitter quite a bit. So I set up a Twitter account uh, with my students, so they have their devices in hand. And so if they have an immediate question, again, kind of that more of the feedback, because my students are quite um, shy or reluctant to share um, for fear of um, being kind of called out in front of their peers. Mm -hmm. um, Kim and the student base that we have. Um, so what I do is the students can DM me. They can send me a direct message to my uh, teacher Twitter handle, and then that way, I'll go ahead and I'll take their questions and put it out to the class and talk about it to the class. And then that way they kind of start to build their confidence level, seeing that when their students don't react to my suggestion or my ideas that I'm sharing, which are really theirs, um, it starts to kind of build their confidence level a bit more. So eventually they wind up actually speaking aloud and sharing their ideas in front of their peers in person and I'm no longer the middleman or the right. middle woman. Yes. Um, um, just oh, go ahead. My, my students, my students are kind of are young for Twitter accounts, so that's why yeah. we have things like today's meet and things like that. But they're not, and of course, their names are still there on today's meet. But yeah, well, and so it's kind of a gray area for me um, with what I'm allowed to do and not allowed to do. Right. Uh, with with my students, but given the fact that many of my students are um, their own guardians or um, living on their own. I get a little bit more wiggle room on that one. Yeah. Uh, to put it out there to anyone that is watching this feed, if uh, you have any questions for us, if you go to the bottom of uh, the Hangout on air on YouTube, you can go ahead and you can ask any questions you have for Tammy or myself with regards to BYOD as well. So it's not just the two of us talking back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> um, so another couple of different things that I kind of like with the BYOD is the fact that, again, I feel that I'm talking about myself because there's so few of us. Um, <laughs> low income. So low income with me, and I'm going to say low income with me in terms of my school. Uh -huh. So I don't have a lot of devices available to me. We have a computer lab that we share with the Adult Learning Center that's also in the building, which houses 20 computers. So if you get 20 computers in an open computer lab, that's really not enough to house the drop in adult learners as well as my students within a classroom setting. Um, so by them bringing their own devices, um, some are getting into bringing laptops and a couple bring tablets, more so laptops or cell phones and smartphones. And then that way I get to do a little bit more on the spot with them. I also like facts that if they have a question, I just say I don't know about it. Right. I don't know, right. I don't know the answer and then I have them sit there and do and tag team and break them up and do a quick uh, little web search and research online so they get the answers and I'm not just talking at them the yes. whole time as well. And yeah, do you have any questions for me and how I use it or? 
Uh, what kind of what kind of uh, so besides Twitter and just going out and researching questions? What other ways? What are other uh, sites or apps that are do, that you use? Um, so uh, again, my students are older based um, than yours. Right. Um, so one of the main ones that I live with on a daily basis in my third term um, when I teach PE. We have off-site PE class, so we're never on the school site because we don't have the gymnasium. We have physical classrooms and that's really it. Um, so what I do with them is I use the app um, that was formerly known as Remind 101. Um, recently I love that. They just turned their name into Remind Only. Um, so just Remind um, and then that way I get to send out a text to all my students because I know they all have cell phones. They don't always answer them, but they get the text. Um, right. So I always send out a text on the day of and kind of saying where we're going, especially considering it's weather dependent because we're outdoors, so we have to kind of do a quick last minute game plan um, change if the weather turns foul and starts to rain on us because there's nothing better than a bunch of students miserable out in the pouring rain. <laughs> um, so that's, that's one of my other ones that I use. Um, they also started using that one um, themselves to... Um, a couple of them started doing it for study groups, which I found quite interesting that they kind of went out and created their own little study groups um, and had one kind of person that they knew that was always in class um, collect different people's names and they would start sharing in um, questions back and forth with that one because they weren't comfortable enough with sharing their private information and private telephone numbers. Right. Um, but they were good with uh, creating kind of like a, a study group captain for places and times to meet in that as well. So that just provided them another opportunity to communicate and share with each other. Yeah, I, I use Remind 101. The one thing I like about Remind 101 is, is the uh, running record of the text you've sent out. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and why do you like that one? I know why I like it. Why do you like the running text that you send out? Um, well, you know, with my age group, then you know, you have the parent who will set, will you know, come back and say, "Well, I didn't, I didn't know this," or you know, so I have proof of communication with my parents. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, that's exactly what I kind of use it as as well for my students. I'm like, <laughs> this is you, you've signed up, and this is the text I sent. Yes. Like, <laughs> like oh, because everyone gets into the habit. I think um, even I know I do. You get into the habit of just kind of, if you're in the middle of doing something as a text or some notification comes through, you just automatically delete it thinking you're going to go back later, right. but, often, but often forget to go back later. So yeah, it's kind of a, um, what we call in our program a CYA, cover your own fill in the blank. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's one of the reasons that I like Remind 101. Um, not too sure. I also, I mean, I have my students, depending on what they're doing, um, some of them will bring the laptops in class. And so with that, uh, I'll have some of them to kind of do, it, all, it fluctuates year to year and class to class. Um, but I'll have students kind of be official note taker. Uh -huh. um, and then that way they kind of take a little bit of responsibility. And every once in a while, some of the students are more willing to lend out their devices during class time to share so others get the experience. So then that way they kind of also kind of get to take turns on sharing their notes and sharing things out and kind of being responsible for everyone for the day. So it's a kind of a meet in the middle BYOD because I'm not <laughs> supplying the computers at all. <laughs> But they're doing kind of computer-based stuff that they normally would in, a, you know, a regular school in a regular classroom that has a computer or two or more. Right. Yeah. So I kind of get to do a little bit of a hybrid with my groups. Now, the, um, one, of the, I, the, one of the apps, uh, or, well, one of the sites that I use, and it comes as an app on your phone, and, and I found it quite uh, quite useful this year having it on my phone, but it's Linoit, L-I-N-O-I-T dot com, okay. and it's a digital bulletin board, so you put post-it notes, uh, so I use it like as exit slips, oh, okay, and uh, open-ended questions and things like that, so, um, and, the, and, the, and the students really enjoy. And does that automatically it. communicate back to you then through an account, or? Yes, I, I have the teacher. 
yeah, I have the teacher account, and then when I use a QR code so to send my students to whatever bulletin, uh, yeah, digital bulletin board that I want them to to use, and so they scan the QR code and it brings up the bulletin board, and then they can put the post-it notes on it. And then on my teacher account, I can see the post-it notes as they're being posted. Oh, cool! So it's kind of a live feed as well, then. Yes. Yes. Nice. That. That's good then. I mean, I can see a benefit to that one. And sorry, that was um, Linoitz. Can you spell that one again for me? L i n o i t dot com. Ah, excellent. And um, do you, are there any other apps? Like one of the other ones that I've found with the BYOD for my students, um, especially when they're in um, some of their um, self-paced courses because we do have a couple of self-paces that they go through. Um, mm -hmm. It's available on um, tablets as well as uh, most smartphones and Androids. Um, I don't know if it's BlackBerry compatible yet, um, but uh, Flashcard Let. Oh, I have so not heard it's, that. It's, it's, it's a virtual flashcard. We all remember taking, or at least I always did, you would take the you know recipe cards from Mom's Cupboard and you'd start writing all of your notes on them to kind of study and prepare for tests and so this is kind of a virtual one that they can carry with them wherever they go. So instead of having that big stack of recipe cards that you're trying to figure out what to do with, um, you get to go through and work along with those as well. And you get to check them off. Yeah, I'm confident. I don't need to go back to that term. Or a little bit more of the, no, I need to keep reviewing that one. And you get to randomly shuffle, or you can do them all in linear order to how you enter them as well. So it's a little bit more of a flexible thing, and it provides just another um, study tool. For students, so every once in a while, um, I have a few students that, as soon as they get a new definition or a new term or a new equation, they'll automatically enter it into the flash cardlet, and then they'll have that with them. So it's just another way of them taking their notes and being able to study from as well on the go. Oh, I like that, and I'll share that one out as well. And we're not getting any questions. So again, if anyone wants any questions on BYOB. Or BYOB. <laughs> you can tell where my mind is. Anyone with the BYOD, bring your own devices into your classrooms and best practices. Uh, again, ask your questions down below on the YouTube link, and we will um, try to answer them to our best abilities. Um, so we've kind of covered. Do you, have you found that there's a little bit more resistance? I'm kind of curious about why your um, principal decided to forego the whole. Um, trial period um, with yourself and the other class and just go completely school-wide? Was it something that was kind of more of a district initi initiated or was it just himself really wanting to go that way? And how does your principal support um, yourself and all the other teachers with the BYOD? Um, I the, or do you know how he plans on supporting you? I, I don't, uh, but the the uh, the pilot where two, the two teachers in the classroom was a district-wide initiative. There was uh, so we so two two teachers from each school and district would, uh, came together during the year of this past year and went through training. And yeah. we uh, the, our trainer was actually from Fourth Sight County Schools in Georgia. They they they've been featured on uh, like uh, I think. Uh, an ABC news program or something, but uh, the, so the lady that was in over that in Georgia came and trained us one day of training, and um, so I went. We went back, and I've been at that school for a long time, where where I am now, and um, there there's always been an issue with bandwidth, and so one of the issues when each grade level at my school got um, 13 iPads per grade level, the issue was the iPads would lose connectivity because of the of having to share bandwidth. And yeah. um, so one of the issues that I thought about once I finished with the training was, you know, if our class, if our class doesn't have, if our two classrooms didn't have separate routers with their own personal passwords, then once the students logged on to the network at the school building, you know, we would have to make sure that they logged out before they left our classroom or it would continue to steal bandwidth. Yeah. So he he thought that through and thought, well, you know, he was he if he was gonna have to put money into 
adding uh, a better a better system to support the bandwidth, then he might as well, you know, just go school wide. Okay, so go bigger home. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, well, no, because that's always a concern too, right? Especially with um, schools that are buildings that are a little bit older, is getting that uh, bandwidth prop uh, through there that can actually properly handle a large group and a large number on the router and on the Wi-Fi at the same time, right? Because right. you do need to have the Wi-Fi for it, otherwise you're going to have an impossibility of having the students going through and plugging it all in in person. Right. Okay, so yeah, we don't have Wi-Fi. We're not allowed Wi-Fi. Oh, wow. In our um, schools, so we kind of have a little bit of a secret setup. Um, but we're also close enough to Starbucks. If you get oh, to a particular, awesome. if you get a, to a particular corner in um, a couple of our classrooms, you can get the Starbucks Wi-Fi from across the parking lot. Um, so I know a few of our students do that as well. I know I do. <laughs> when it's not always available to me. But excellent. Um, is there anything else you want to um, go ahead and share uh, there, Tammy? Otherwise. I don't know if I have anything else, so we might want to just kind of wrap it up and see what else we can find out there for okay. our camp home. Good. Okay. Yeah. Do you have anything you want to share at all, or no? Uh, no. That no. I think I'm I'm done. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for your time there, Tammy. Um, and for those of you watching, hopefully uh, Tammy and I were able to provide you some sort of ideas on it. Um, a couple of the apps that we were going for was I was going to recommend the flashcard let. And then Tammy, and you were recommending? Linoit. Linoit. And I think we both um, kind of thought a little bit highly of Socrative as well. Yes. For one of the other possibilities, right? Yes. Excellent. Thank you very much for your time, Tammy. And thank you to everyone for watching us here with the BYOD best practices for EdCamp 3.0 in session two. Have a good night, everyone. Bye, Tammy. Bye.